Good morning. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Yes, today is Easter Sunday and welcome to this hour of worship at St. John's online. I know we've uh, kind of gotten used to this, right? Uh, worshiping together, gathering together to hear God's word online and I'm so wonderful that you're joining uh, us today because today is Easter Sunday and we are celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ but we're also celebrating it by starting a new weekend message series called Resurrection Truth. In starting today in the coming weeks we're going to be looking at seven essential truths that come from the resurrection and we're going to be looking at them in the midst of this crisis situation that we're in, but also we're all going to be looking at these resurrection truths in whatever situation we find ourselves in. And so the very first resurrection truth that we're going to be focusing on is that the resurrection, it's for everyone. It truly is. It's for you, it's for me, it's for everyone. That's what we're going to be focusing on today, this Easter Sunday. And so right now, we're going to continue our worship with our opening hymn.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Christ has risen from the dead. Alleluia. God the Father has crowned him with glory and honor. He has given him dominion over the works of his hands. He has put all things under his feet. Alleluia. Alleluia. Let us come before God in true repentance, seeking his mercy and forgiveness. O God our Father, we admit and confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you in thought and in word and in deed. Have mercy on us and forgive us, O Lord. We confess that we have not lived as your followers, but have sought to go our own ways in directions that have not brought glory to you or blessing to others. Have mercy on us and forgive us, O Lord. We confess that your love has not reached others through us in every situation, that there have been times in which we have been loveless, thoughtless, and judgmental toward others, unwilling to help our neighbors as we ought. Have mercy on us and forgive us, Lord. We confess that your will has not been our priority at all times, and that we have not always been defenders of the weak and helpless in our circle of family, neighbors, and friends, and beyond. Have mercy on us and forgive us, Lord. We confess that we have not used every opportunity given to us to witness to the resurrection faith that is ours and have at times been, been slow to speak of the hope that is ours in Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us, Lord. Upon this your confession and by the command of our Lord, I, as a called and ordained servant to Christ, forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and also with you.
May the Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, by the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light. Grant that we who have been raised with him may abide in his presence and rejoice in the hope of eternal glory. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Our first reading this Easter morning is from the book of Acts, the 10th chapter, verses 34 through 43. So Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. As for the word that he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. You yourselves know what happened throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee after the baptism that John proclaimed. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. And we are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and made him to appear. Not to all the people, but to us who had been chosen by God as witnesses, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins throughout his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from the book of Colossians, the third chapter, verses 1 through 4. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel, according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. And there they will see me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate, 
he suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life for the world to come. Amen. Hey kids, how are you doing? Great to have you. Happy Easter to you. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. I know I just, I love celebrating Easter. I love celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I hope you do too, right? Yeah. But you know what I really love about Easter? I love the candy. Oh yeah, the candy, right? Yeah, I, I wonder, uh, did you get any candy? Yeah, can you uh, mail some to me? No, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Don't, please don't do that, please don't do that. But you know what? I uh, actually took some of the candy that we got and brought it here to show you. This is a nice little Easter egg, right? You know, and then we open it up. Oh, the jelly beans. Oh, yeah, it's good stuff. Very colorful quite tasty, yeah. But let me ask you a question. What if only you got candy, but no one else did? That would seem kind of great, right? But would it? I mean, you're like, oh, oh, candy, it's so good. But at the same time, you're thinking, it's so good. How come they didn't get it? Or say I wanted to share these wonderful jelly beans with you, right? Yeah. But I was only going to share it with just one of you and not with anyone else. That wouldn't be right, would it? I mean, as tasty and as colorful and as wonderful as these jelly beans are, that wouldn't be right to just share it with just one person and not with anyone else? Hmm. Well, we heard in our reading from the book of Acts about Peter. Peter is sharing a message that has been given to him by God with some people that he didn't think were able to receive the goodness of God, to receive the good news of Jesus Christ. But you know what? God opened his eyes. He opened his eyes to say, yes, even these people that, you know, they weren't originally part of God's promises and his love and salvation, but now, now that Jesus had risen from the dead, now God wanted to share this good news with everyone. In fact, the resurrection of Jesus Christ was for them too. And after Peter gave this wonderful message to them, they too believed that Jesus was their Lord and Savior and they received eternal life and forgiveness of sins, right? That's when Peter realized, oh wow, the resurrection of Jesus Christ and, and his love and his grace, it's not just for me, it's not just for some people, it's for everyone. And that's the good news that you can hear on this Easter Sunday. Jesus died and rose for you to give you forgiveness, to give you eternal life, to give you something as sweet as his very own righteousness. But the good news is it's not just for you. It's for everyone. It's for your entire family. It's for your friends, and I know you're missing them right now, but it's for them too. And it's for your neighbors right down the street. It's for people halfway around the world. The good news of the resurrection of Jesus Christ is for everyone. So what do you think? Do you think today is a good time to find someone 
whether it's your own family in your own home or maybe calling someone on the phone or maybe, you know, getting on like FaceTime or, or a Zoom or some other video conferencing thing and just simply saying, Jesus rose for you. I hope you can do that. In fact, let's say a prayer to Jesus to help us with that. And will you repeat after me? Dear Jesus, thank you for your resurrection. What good news this is. Help us to share this good news with everyone. And all God's people said, Amen. Happy Easter, everyone. Happy Easter. Share the wonderful good news that Jesus has risen for them too. And now we're going to continue with our next hymn.
Much grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for this morning's Easter message is from the book of Acts chapter 10. And we're focusing on verse 34. So Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly, I understand that God shows no partiality. Will you pray with me? Lord God, Heavenly Father, on this Easter Sunday, we rejoice that you raised your Son from the dead. May we continue to rejoice in this good news. And may this wonderful message and these words that are being proclaimed right now, may they sink into our hearts and fill us with joy and then fill our lives with love and with a zeal to share this message with everyone. And it's in the name of Jesus, your risen Son, we ask this. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Yes, once again, we are at Easter Sunday and we are celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Christ. Oh, what joy it is to gather together to celebrate that God has raised his son from the dead. And yet, our joy is kind of tempered a little bit because we are celebrating Easter apart. We're watching this from our homes. Yes, we're celebrating Easter in the midst of this <laughs> pandemic. And I'll tell you what, it's been kind of tough, isn't it? Yeah, this, the joy of, of Christians gathering together and, and, and celebrating the good news that Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. Well, it's not happening. We are gathering together online, but... We're separated because of this coronavirus that has spread around the globe. And there's one sobering truth about this pandemic. It's that this virus shows no partiality. It doesn't. As I've been watching the news uh, on a daily basis, it's quite clear that this virus, everyone can catch it. I've heard of people halfway around the world in, in countries like uh, Japan and countries like Italy, they've caught the virus. I've heard of people who were older, you know, the elderly, they've caught the virus. But I've also heard of people in their 30s and 20s, even teenagers, even babies have caught this virus. This virus is highly contagious and can be caught by anyone. And even more sobering is that with this virus, there's no partiality in terms of the death it can cause. I've seen people who, yes, were in nursing homes, the elderly, They've died from it. I've seen Chicago police officers and firefighters die from this. I've seen a woman in her, her 30s who's died from this. And yes, I've even seen teenagers and a baby die from COVID-19. It's horrible. And yes, that's why our Easter joy is somewhat tempered a little. Because the truth is, this virus, it's taking no prisoners. It could be caught by anyone, and yes, anyone can die from it. No partiality at all. But can no partiality be a good thing. Well, consider this text from Acts. 
Peter preaching at the house of Cornelius. A little bit of background and context here can make us understand just how powerful this text is. Because for Peter and for many others, he had a partiality. He, had a, he was viewing things in a certain way. You see, Peter believed that God had chosen the nation of Israel to be his people. He had made a covenant with them. I will be your God. You will be my people. And he promised Israel, I will pour out my blessings upon you and the promise of salvation through the coming Christ. And Peter believed wholeheartedly that Jesus, Jesus was that Christ. When they were walking along one day and Jesus asked them, who do you say that I am? Peter, he boldly proclaimed, you are the Christ of God. And he didn't need, it wasn't some empty confession, no. He actually saw it with his own eyes. He saw that Jesus was the Christ in his ministry. Healing people, casting out demons, proclaiming the kingdom of God with all authority. But he also saw that Jesus was the Christ when he suffered, when he uh, carried his cross, when he was crucified, when he died for the sins of the people. And yes, three days later, when he saw him alive, boldly proclaiming, I'm here, I'm alive, I've conquered death. But even after this, even 40 days later, just before Jesus was about to ascend into heaven, Peter still asked Jesus, Lord, at this time, are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He still was viewing things that way. He still was asking that question, well, what about the Gentiles? What about those who were not of the nation of Israel? What about them? I mean, yes, yeah, certainly a few of them had become believers in the God of Israel. They were called God-fearers, and that's what Cornelius was. But still, they could not become fully part of the community of God's people. They couldn't become part of the nation of Israel. So you see that Peter still showed partiality even after Jesus rose from the dead. And so God, God had to show Peter there is no partiality with God. He showed it through a vision that he gave Peter a vision of this great sheet with animals on it that were considered unclean by the Jewish people. But God said, do not, do not consider unclean what I have declared clean. And then God showed this to Peter, no partiality. He showed it with the messengers that came to Peter's house as he was residing in Joppa. He came, to, they came to him and said, we had a vision. We had a vision from God saying, go to Peter, go to his house in Joppa and bring him here so that he can proclaim the good news. And then God showed no partiality through the message that he gave Peter here in our text. Even Peter declared, I see that I understand there is no partiality, but that all who fear the Lord and who do what is right, they are his. And then he went on to launch into about Jesus and his ministry and how he was killed by hanging on a tree. But God raised him from the dead and that Peter and the others were witnesses of all this. And they were sent to proclaim the good news that everyone who believes in him and his resurrection will have forgiveness of sin through his name. 
And then God showed that there was no partiality because immediately after, even while he was speaking these words, wow, the Holy Spirit fell on the Gentiles, fell on Cornelius' house, and everyone was amazed. Peter was amazed. He's like, we have to baptize these people. And they became part of God's covenant people, the nation of Israel, by faith. It was all by faith. That's what Peter came to realize here in this text. Peter realized that with God, because of the, the resurrection of Jesus Christ that he had worked, there was no partiality with him. And today, on Easter Sunday, this is especially true with the resurrection. This past week, two things kind of uh, popped out in my head concerning this. And the first one was uh, when my wife Melissa and I were taking a walk, a quarantine walk. <laughs> Every morning, as long as the weather was uh, not rainy or snowy, we would go take a walk just to, you know, get moving, get out of the house, social distance, yes. But it would also give us a chance to talk and process. And I commented to her and I said, you know, I've been thinking about this. But it seems that every year, each new year of my ministry, it's getting a little more challenging to preach the resurrection. But that it's getting easier to preach Good Friday. And we discussed that and we came up with the fact that, well, Jesus is the only one to have risen from the dead, never to die again. But we are still living in our Good Friday existence. And so we identify more with Good Friday than with Easter. That was one thing that happened. But in light of that, a second thing happened. And it was when I was watching the evening news and they were talking about all the deaths that are happening in our country happening around the world and it just keeps growing and growing and increasing and spiking and it got to me. So much death. So much pain and suffering. But that's when I realized, wow, this is what Jesus was doing outside the tomb of Lazarus. He was weeping. Not an outright wailing. He was weeping because he was sad and yet angry at what had happened to his creation. And so when he called Lazarus out of the tomb, he was declaring his power and victory even over death. And when he called Lazarus out of the tomb, he was also giving a foretaste of what he was going to do after he died on the cross. And I couldn't help but think in that dark moment a light of joy suddenly overcame me. Wow. The resurrection really speaks to this. The resurrection is incredible. The resurrection is wonderful. And it is, isn't it? The resurrection is absolutely wonderful. How so? Well, especially in this global pandemic, it's wonderful. Because I tell you what, even if someone, a Chicago police officer, or an elderly woman in, in Japan, or even an infant, should die from the coronavirus, though Jesus rose from the dead, and, 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 and those who believe in him, those who have been baptized into his name, those who have forgiveness of sin through his name, death is not the end for them. Resurrection from the dead is. But even if we don't die from coronavirus, even if we're still alive, even if maybe we get sick and then we get better, or maybe we never catch it, the resurrection is still wonderful for us. It's wonderful because, you know what? We have forgiveness of sin. God raised Jesus from the dead. And that was a guarantee 
that he had accepted Christ's sacrifice for our sin and Christ left all sin behind in the empty tomb. It's gone. How else is the resurrection so wonderful? Well, because it shows that God is in control. God's in control. Everyone thought, that's it. Christ is dead. He's buried in the tomb. But God had the last word when he raised Jesus from the dead, showing that he was in control throughout it all. And that he is still in control of all things. And the resurrection is wonderful because, you know what? Everything has changed. Everything changed when Jesus rose from the dead. He brought in a new life, a new kingdom, a new rule, a new reign into our lives that we get to live by every single day. The resurrection is just wonderful. But if it's so wonderful, how could we possibly believe that God would give the resurrection and the blessings to only a select number of people and not to others? To say, I'm going to give it to you, but not to you. How could we believe that God would show partiality with something so wonderful and not with everyone? Huh. Well, that's when Peter's words become ours. Truly, you and I understand that God shows no partiality. That the resurrection and the blessings that come through it are for everyone. The resurrection and its blessings are for you. Even if at times you don't think they are. Even if you think everything's changed? No. Not really. I mean, I still sin. There's still uh, evil and suffering in my life. And <laughs> my life sometimes... I'm trying to control it, but it's out of control. I try to put out some fires here, try to take care of that there. No. It's out of control. So how could the resurrection and its blessings be mine then? And my sin? Oh. How can God have accepted the sacrifice of Jesus for my sin and yet look at my sin? It's bad horrible. Look at how I've hurt people. Look at how I've grieved the Holy Spirit. It can't be for me. And when you're at the point of death, when there's nothing else to be done, it can be truly fearful. You could have doubts. Really? Is there life after death? But God says to you, Everything has changed. Not necessarily the circumstances that you're in, but my relationship with you through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's solid. I'm here for you because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And yeah, I'm in control. It may not seem like it, but I am working all things out for the good of those who love me. And nothing is going to separate me from you because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And your sin, it's gone. It's gone, 100%. Jesus left it all behind in the empty tomb. And when you die, it's not the end. When you die, it was not the end. You will rise again because Jesus rose as well. This is the blessings of the resurrection for you that you get right now. But it's not just for you. It's for others. Even if you don't think that it is for them. Even if you looked at them and you're like, they're never going to change. Why should they have the blessings of the resurrection? Their life, oh, why would I even think about the blessings of the resurrection given to them. Their life's out of control. Their sin is too great. God couldn't possibly forgive them. 
And yet when you look at a loved one, maybe they're dying or they're on hospice, maybe you can have a hard time believing, really, do they have the gift of eternal life after death? But God says to them, they can change. My all-powerful word, the word of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, can change people. And it can bring huh, peace and comfort into the chaos of their lives. They are forgiven, just as you are. And yes, I promise you that they too will rise from the dead because Christ is risen from the dead. Therefore, all of us have peace. We have comfort. We have hope <laughs> because of the resurrection and its blessings. But if the resurrection and its blessings are for everyone, this Easter Sunday, I want you to ask yourself, is there someone that needs to hear this good news? Because you have been given a vision by God, a vision of resurrection of Jesus Christ and your own. And you have been given people in your life. God has placed people in your life, whether in your own home right now or online. He has placed people in your life that need to hear this. And you have been given a message by God. It's the same message that Peter gave to Cornelius. Jesus went around doing good for all people. They killed him by putting him on a tree, but God raised him up. And that everyone who believes in him and his resurrection will have forgiveness through his name. This is the same message you get to give to people. And when you share it with them, oh, watch the resurrection happen. Watch the comfort and the peace and the joy and the love and the new life that will rise up within them. Because brothers and sisters, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And this is the truth for you, for me, for everybody. Amen. At this time, we take and gather our offerings. And again, thank you everyone so much for your generosity during this time of this pandemic. And yes, I know that money's getting tight out there. But thank you for your cheerful and sacrificial giving to the ministry of St. John's. Remember, you can go to our website or click on the link in the constant contact that you receive to set up either a one-time gift at our Vanco online service or a recurring gift to help support the ministry here at St. John's. Or write a check, put it in your offering envelope and mail it in. Or if you want to get out of the house today on Easter Sunday, just drive around a little. Just drive by and drop it off at our mail slot just outside the doors to the entrance to the school. Thank you very much for your generosity because Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us pray. Rejoicing in the resurrection of our Lord and sharing in, in his peace, let us pray to the Lord on behalf of ourselves and all people as they have need. O risen Savior, set free our tongues to confess your resurrection before a world still captive to sin and death. Give us courage to go to every place and to speak in every language the salvation won for us upon the cross and the hope granted to us of life that death cannot overcome. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O risen Lord, make us to burn with the fire of your love, that we may love you above all things and love our neighbors as ourselves. Deliver us from fear and relieve the anxiety of our hearts, that we may live out fully the hope planted within us and the new lives we receive in the waters of our baptism. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O risen Lord, hear us on behalf of our President, our Governor, the Congress of the United States, and all state and local elected officials. Guide them according to your word that their labor for our nation's health and welfare may not be in vain, nor forgetful of the vulnerable, aging, and the unemployed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O risen Lord, hear us on behalf of those who cry to you in any need, especially the sick, the suffering, the disabled, the wounded in spirit, those who suffer mental illness, and those in their last days on earth. We especially pray for those that we now name in silence. Lord God, give them grace according to their need and sustain them in their afflictions to the day when their sufferings will be exchanged for glory in the life to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. These things and all else that we should have, have, that we should have asked on this day of holy rejoicing, grant to us, Lord, for the sake of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Receive the benediction of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia.
Hey everyone, hope the service was a joy and a blessing to you. Happy Easter. Remember that the resurrection is for you, for me, and for everyone. It was great that you were able to join us online. I know, hang in there. I know this uh, stay-at-home order and uh, the social distancing and all the things that we're doing to flatten the curve, it can wear on you, right? But I'll tell you what, hang in there and find strength in the grace of Jesus Christ when in your weakness you kind of get a little frustrated, okay? Well, I hope that you can join us next uh, week, next weekend, as we continue our series, Resurrection Truth. And we're actually going to be looking at how God's mission won't be stopped. It just won't. That's going to be what we unpack next weekend. And also, we're going to be having our next 505 online service this coming Saturday. So look in Constant Contact on our YouTube channel and on our Facebook page for more uh, links and information for that coming up. Also, today's Easter Sunday, and it was the last day of the Red Letter Challenge. Congratulations to everyone that made it all the way through. And I know it was challenging uh, following Jesus through these five things of, of being and forgiving and serving and giving and going. Yeah, we had our ups and downs, right? But I want to know how you did. For those of you that actually did the Red Letter Challenge book, I want you to shoot me an email at b.roberts at sjlagrange.com and I want you to shoot me an email. Tell me about your experience. Tell me how it went and maybe we'll share some of that on social media. Also, don't forget that our next uh, pickup time for our wonderful Meals to Go ministry, so thankful for that, uh, is next Sunday Make sure you check Constant Contact and our Facebook page uh, for more information about that, for sign-ups about that. But I want to tell you something right now. I want to thank everyone that's been pitching in. First, I want to thank everyone of St. John's that has been doing their part, staying at home, social distancing, doing what they can to help slow the spread of this coronavirus so that we can eventually get back to our lives, uh, get out of the house. Thank you so much. And thank you so much to everyone that is checking on everyone, checking on your neighbors, checking on your friends, checking the uh, your family members online, all of it. Thank you for reaching out and staying connected. Thank you to our council who has been uh, engaging in a uh, phone tree, uh, calling people, just checking to see how they're doing. Thank you very much for your efforts. Thank you for our uh, meal uh, team, our Meals to Go team. Oh, so thankful that you are providing very much needed meals for those in need. Thank you for that. And thank you for everyone that has been helping out with these worship services. It's been great doing them to continue to provide word ministry to you in this time of this global pandemic. And so I leave you now. Hope to see you next weekend online at St. John's. And with the blessings of the resurrection fresh in our minds right now, go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.